welcome back. This is video three. So if you watched the first video on making money, just doing basically about anything, then I know you watched that second video on remote work from home. This is the nitty gritty right here. This is starting a business during a pandemic, okay? So when you do receive that stimulus check, what you wanna do is flip it, okay? When I'm telling you about flipping it, I'm telling you about turning that little bit of money into a profitable business for yourself. You guys already know you got to grab that pen and paper because all of my webinars have insightful information, a lot of websites that I'm going to send you to so that you can get yourself prepared to start your online business. If you're getting unemployment weekly, you can take a little bit of that money and start getting your business licenses. Be sure to give me a like so I can make more videos like these to help you guys out and making some extra cash. And also... So it could help the algorithm going on on YouTube. If you feel the video information for in this video is not for you, share it with somebody because you never know who you may help out with this information. The first thing I want to do is give you guys a brief introduction on what we're going to be talking about in this video. Starting a business during a pandemic. Yes, everybody wants to do that. We're 2021. I'm so what are your goals and aspirations? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. What is it that you want to do? What are you looking to sell? And is it a product or service that is needed in your community or around the world? How would your business benefit other people? So when we talk about goals and aspirations, we're talking about what have you dreamed of doing, what you feel, what you feel like you're good at, and you that you know you can make money from okay it could be any little thing it could, um what you want to do is when you already know what you want what your goals are what your dreams are what you're looking to provide whether it's a product or a service then the next thing you need to do is put it together in a business plan and I'm going to show you how you can do it on your own, save yourself a lot of money, even though it's going to be time consuming, but you have to have that patience if you want to start that business and make that money. So you're going to put together a business plan. Then you're going to do your research. Your research can consist anything of you giving out free samples and getting feedback or you doing a service for somebody and getting feedback. Uh, finances, you got to have your finances in order. And this is where your stimulus money or your unemployment money can come into play because you're going to have to, like we talked about in the last video, scared money don't make money. So we have to invest a little bit of our money in order to get some of that revenue. This includes getting your licenses, getting your tax ID number, your EIN, you don't pay for that, it's free, but you do pay for a license, whether it's a sole proprietorship, a general partnership, a corporation, LLC, whatever it is, you have to pay for that. Um, product inventory, you gotta make sure that you have money to purchase if you have to if you're selling offline or if you're doing like Facebook sales, but you have the stuff in your house, you gotta be able to buy that inventory. So you have to be able to um, have that money aside. Marketing and advertising, whether you're marketing and advertising on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever, you can do a lot of free advertising, which I'm going to show y'all how to do, but sometimes you got to pay for a little bit of push. You understand? You got to pay so that you can get some more views and some more likes on your posts, and that's how it'll start generating traffic. Um, promotions meaning you can hand out business cards, you can hand out flyers, bookmarks, buttons, pens, whatever it is to get your business on the map and start telling people that you are open for business and this is what you're selling or the service that you're providing. And space, if you're doing offline sales, you can do it from your home, you definitely can, but you don't want people coming in and out your home. So when you're doing stuff from your home, you're basically doing it in your home, but online, either most mainly on Facebook or Instagram. Um, 
But if you get space, you want to be able to have that rent or that mortgage money to pay that space if you have a store for your products. Implementation. Conducting your market research. That means getting the job done. Implementation means getting the job done. No procrastinating. You, if you have to do that market research, like I said, you can give out free samples. Um, uh, promoting products. That's a big thing. You have to promote your products or your service. And then the last point that we're going to talk about is gaining and keeping your loyal clientele, meaning the people that you see are repeat customers. So we just left 2020, right? Which was a horrible year for everyone. 2021 has to be our year. We are in the first week of February and we need to think about starting to make some money. Time to think about success. So here we go with your goals and aspirations. We talked a little bit about it. What do you want to sell? Uh, what type of business are you looking to be into? And how is it going to help you in your home, your home life, your finances? And how is it going to help somebody else? You may want to start your own beauty line. Okay. There's ways of doing it. So the first thing that uh, we talked about, once you know what you want to do, what your niche is, what you feel comfortable in doing, you got to have a business plan. You don't always need a business plan, right? Especially nowadays that a lot of people are just starting websites up, you know, and, and selling all type of stuff online. But the reason why a business plan is good is because let's say you need capital. You need some type of funding for your business. You can go into the SBA or any um, small business organization that deals with small businesses um, and take your business plan with you. You've already done your research. You've already put all your paperwork together, all your finances, your products, your services, and you are ready to move forward, but you need that funding. A business plan is always the best thing to have when seeking out some type of capital. Those that do not know what a business plan is. A business plan is basically your business, what it is that you're trying to do. And if you've never done one um, and you're looking to start a business and you don't have the money to pay somebody, because you can outsource and have somebody put together your business plan for you. You just got to give them all the information, paperwork, and all of that. You can go to this website. It's called dreambuilder.org. Dream Builder, I, I, I took this course twice. OK, because I just enjoyed it so much. And it, and because I have several different lines of business, I wanted to do a business plan for each of my businesses. So you can go onto this website and it is a 18 hour course. OK, you can break this course down. You could do two hours a day for the rest of the week. You could do, you know, however your leisure, because you work at your leisure, but you go in here, is it free? Guys, free, all right? You guys know how I feel about free items, free things. You can go on this website and sign up for an account for free and go through their courses. At the end of the course, you're going to receive a um, certificate of completion, and you're going to receive a general business plan guideline, which all you have to do is transfer into like a Microsoft Word software or something like that and just revise it. This is a great website. Guys, really look into this. It's a, like I said, it's an 18 hour course, but you can get through it and it's going to provide you so much information and so much help to move forward with capital funding, which is ultimately what you want for your business. This is a um, type of business plan that you can put together, okay? These are how you strategize. This is kind of like a, a brainstorming map for your business. And as you can see, both with your business plan, which will be either the name of your business right here in the middle, and then you could branch out. You could do your little branches. You know, you know, you got to do your research and development. You got to be innovative. You got to create something new. You can't be like everybody else in the market. You got to um, know what your strengths and weaknesses in your business and other people's businesses, because your strengths may not be their strengths. You understand? Your weaknesses may not be their weakness, their weaknesses. So you got to know what um, risk you're going to be taking when it comes to certain different brands and um, products and services. This plan. We're going to get into these finances. So 
when you talk about business license, you want to go to your city, whole, whatever. The, the You could go to the website in your state and um, find out how to get your business license from your state. The vendor's license, the reason why a lot of people would need a business license and a vendor's license is because they're selling other, pe other people's products. So if you want to start selling uh, Noxzema, for example, I don't even know why I said Noxzema, but Noxzema, for example, that's not your product. You didn't create that product, but you want to um, start selling quantities of that product, right? You think that product's going to make you money. So you need to get a vendor's license because you're selling somebody else's property. The next thing you're going to do is get that tax ID certification. That tax ID is going to allow you to do your taxes at the end of the year. Um, or you can write off business expenses, you know, office expenses, stuff like even a, even if you're running your business from home, you can write off a certain area in your home that you use as your office, okay? And trademarking and service markings, tra trademark is for products. Service mark is for services. So if you want to trade, if you have a business line, a, a clothing line, you can trademark it. If you have a graphic design service, you can service mark it. Product inventory, you want to purchase your product, whatever it is, and have it in stock so that you can sell it. Um, marketing and advertising promotions, this includes anything, like I said before, business cards, flyers, brochures, whatever it is that you're using. And then also you have your online advertising and marketing. Um, um, space, what I mean by space is your own store, um, storefront. Or you could have a flea market space where you're paying out monthly or something like that. So those are included within your finances because you have to have this that. This is what a Nevada state business license looks like, okay? This is for a sole proprietor. It's not LLC or nothing like that. You file your business license with your state. You're going to get a business license in the mail, but that same day that you actually pay all your fees and everything, if you're doing it online, you're going to get your registration number which will be here, your business identification number. And that with that number and the name of your business, you can go, which will be the next step, to get your tax ID, okay? And then that's how you know that your business is completely formulated once you get your business license and you have your tax ID. This is what a general partnership agreement looks like, and you could do this on your Microsoft Word software or any type of software where you have some type of data entry. And... Start and just put the plug the names in. You can even get these uh, on Microsoft Word as a template. And you would take this or mail it to your office, your state office that does the licenses, and they will stamp it, they will seal it, and you will get your number. Okay. Um, this is what a limited liability company uh form looks like in order to go ahead and start your LLC. Vendors license looks like for a market, a farmer's market. This is in um Milford someplace. I don't know where, but I just put it on here just to show you guys that a lot of places will have you uh do a vendor's license on their own, but then some people like some states, this is the uh, state of Ohio, will have you do an actual application to get a vendor's license that may last you about five years. This is what your EIN tax ID application will look like, okay? Um, but this is what the application will look like. This is the paper form, right? But you're going to definitely uh, see, the, see it looks the same on the website, the irs.gov website this for your business. So once you get your tax ID, this is what the forms are going to look like. You have the online version and you have the paper version because you're going to get an online copy right in your email, but or that you could download directly from right, right after you finish everything. It's going to say download to your computer or save to your computer, something like that. But then you're going to get an email with it attached. And then you're going to get a letter in the mail, maybe a week or two later, depending on the backlog. And it's going to look like, like this. The okay. reason why it's good to have a business in place is because in times like right now, right, that we're in a pandemic, you're going to want to be able to get that money that you need, that you're losing out on because there's a pandemic. 
to keep your money, your, your business afloat. So right now you got the EIDL loan, which is the economic disaster loan for small businesses, independent contractors, freelancers, stuff like that. The PPP, it is a little harder to get, right? Because you have to show proof of law, um, profit and losses. And that's, like I said, paycheck protection. And you can only, you can't do this on your own name. You got to do this with your business. So if you have a business license and you, you've been in business for about more than six months to a year, you can definitely apply for the PPP loan. You can start a Blue Vine account on bluevine.com. You can start a whole account and you could apply for the PPP loan through Blue Vine. Or you could just go to the website and apply through there. But you're going to need that copy of your profits and losses. Let's talk a little bit about trademarking and service marking. So we already know that the trademark is for a good, a, the source of a good, right? That's goods of, of the party or whatever, whoever's selling a good. So the goods could be anything from clothing, makeup, a book, something like that. Right. And it's a small symbol, usually with a letter T or R, and it will be um, posted on your product. Um, service mark is for a service. So if you're doing something like logos, graphic design, stuff like that, you're going to want that service mark, which is usually the S, on your um, service. I'll show you a little bit about the different symbols. So when you're... Product, when you're want, you're about to register, right? You're about to register for trademarking. Let's say it's trademarking your lipstick line. When you send in that application, you're allowed to use the TM on your website and different products that you may be advertising at the moment or selling at the moment. You can use that TM because your application has already been submitted. Once your application is submitted and processed and you get that registration number for your trademark and you know your business is actually trademarked, your, your product, you'll get that R. That R is what you can use on your little tubing, if it's nail polish or whatever, you can use that on your product and you can use it on your website. A service mark, the only time you use the SM is when it is not registered or as a service mark, okay? So you use the SM, but you already did the application and you're just waiting for your stuff to come in. You can use the SM. After your stuff is registered, then you use the S. Um, copyright and the C and the P, the copyright is usually for literary works, like a lot of my books, poetry, stuff like that. If you got a brochure or something that you know you're going to always advertise with, you could copyright that. Um, and then the P is for anything audio. So anything that you may have an audio book out, you can go ahead and register your audio book and you'll have that P on your audio book. These are what the applications look like. They don't change. They look the same. So for a trademark... You're going to put your name, name of your business, partners, whatever, blah, blah. Let's jump into inventory. This is what a general business inventory list will look like. Of course, this is a, just a mock list. But over here is where you would name all of your products, right? Um, actually, you would uh, number your products, right? And let's say you got three different shades of lipstick. So you're going to put... Lipstick one, lipstick two, lipstick three, whatever. And then you will put the colors over here or whatever. And then the description, your price, your actual price, how many you have in stock. If you're doing online sales, it really doesn't matter as long as you keep it, you know, moving. And your inventory value, how much you paid to have your inventory in your home. What was your wholesale price? That's what your inventory value is. Now we're going to talk about implementation. Implementation is the process of getting it done, plain and simple. The first thing you want to do is your market research. So you have your license, your tax ID, you have product inventory. Let's start giving out a couple samples. You know why? Because when you give out free stuff and people like it, they're bound to purchase. Another reason why you want to do market research is because you're not only targeting your audience, but and your customer your customer base but you're also looking out to see what your competitors are doing 
how much how much better can you do than them so that you can keep more customers coming to your business? So here we go. Type of different market research, right? You could do interviews, little focus groups, product service, right? Um, research. Uh, pricing research, it, your price may be too high. You know, people will tell you, hey, you know, this is a cute little item, but it's priced a little too high. And this also goes into your business plan, right? That market research area, because then you'll know how much better you can do if you need more capital to get, a, you know, a certain branding better or something like that. These are ways that you can market your business. Main number one is you want to have a website with a domain, okay? You can have a Shopify store and attach a domain if you're just doing e-commerce business. But if you're doing a lot of personalized stuff or you're doing a service slash business, you may want to have a full-scale website. I feel like you can generate a lot of traffic by just having your own personal website that's linked to all your social media sources and you have it slapped onto all of your um, promo, like your business cards and stuff like that. Places you can advertise, of course, always start when you're starting a, a, on your Facebook, you can advertise on your personal Facebook, but be sure to start yourself a little fan page for that business because you can start adding people to your fan page without having to go through your personal business page and they'll only just go to your business fan page and see whenever you have new products or new services out and be able to share that within um, the social media platform. The only way that your business is going to start generating traffic fast is through your social media because everybody in your social media are following you for a reason, right? That means that they're supporting you in some type of way. So with them seeing all the your business is laying is laid out on social media, they're gonna start sharing, sharing, sharing. And that's sharing is caring. Okay. So when you're sharing other people's work and other people's businesses, that is gonna generate traffic for them, which means more income flow. You want to be able to keep your loyal customers intact because those are going to be the people that's going to keep giving you that passive income where you're just sitting back and watching your orders go out, you know, go out the door. So at a time like now where it is very daunting to be a business owner because of the pandemic, you want to be able to keep communicating with your clientele, whether, like I said, you're doing, um, logos, uh, web designing, whether you have lipstick line, a clothing line or anything like that, you want to be able to let your customers know, listen, even though there's a pandemic, my business is still open. These are the new products I have. You're getting such and such percentage off when you purchase a limited amount or when you purchase this item, you get this item for free. Give out incentives because that's going to keep people coming back. Okay. Customer loyalty, we already talked about it. This is the only way you're going to keep customers loyal to you is by continuously give them, giving them a heads up on your company. The best way to do that is through an email blast newsletter or something like that. You could talk about what's going on during the pandemic, what you as a business owner is doing to make things better, and what new products and services you may have coming in the future or you may already have out so that they can take advantage of that. So last but not least, we have gotten to the end of this webinar. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed all the information that I've given you so far, and I hope that it does take you far in your business journey. Remember that it's all about success in 2021. If you have dreams and goals and aspirations, go for it. If you don't have the funding right now, there are stimulus checks that are coming it's probably going to be three or four coming this year. Use one of those checks to get ahead and get your licenses together. Get your, ID, your tax ID. Get your online storefront going. And you're going to start making some money. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.